Greetings from Africa. I'm Professor Atangana from the University of Free State. Working in the field of fractional calculus, I would like to greet Professor Ngomez, Jose Francesco, Professor Jesus Emmanuel, and I congratulate them for their great diffusion progress and project fractional calculation, diffusion, and more. I would like to, in particular, congratulate Professor Gomez for being elected highly cited mathematician 2021. The reason of my talk is to explain to young people how fractional, the idea of fractional calculus started and how it continue and where it is now. The most important thing is to know that mankind would like to, you know, control the environment within which they live. And to achieve this, there are several steps that they have to follow. The first one is to observe the real world problem, analyze it using perhaps some statistical analysis, then discover the rate or what they call a process, which process or which law, mathematical law, such real world problem depict as a function of time. And the next task is to convert that observation into a mathematical model. Having a mathematical model will be able to express the solution of that mathematical model, com compare it with uh, what they call data. And if there is a great agreement between data and mathematical model, you can use that mathematical model to, as to predict what will happen in the future. So it started with the rate of change. I have a function I would like to know the change between two points. That will help me to know if the function increase, it is constant or decrease. In the convolution sense, that, con that version was first, you know, used to model classical mechanical problem. And it was introduced by Leibniz and Newton. So the classical derivative is in the center of the classical mechanic. For example, I would like to know the decay of a flesh of a human being. That decay will follow a specific process, the decay process. And this can be well modeled using the classical derivative. For example, y prime is equal to minus lambda y. The solution of it is equal to exponential of minus lambda t. This will give you the decay process. However, there are many real world problems that do not follow that process. So if you look at the classical derivatives, it can be seen as the convolution of the classical differential operator with the delta Dirac function. But there are many real world problems that at the same time, we can express the rate of change, but we realize that that rate of change actually depict also some power law sitting or some power law behavior. What you have to do is to convolute the rate of change with the power law function. This gives us what we call a fractional derivative. And there are two types of fractional derivatives with power law. The first one was introduced from the work of Liouville and Riemann. That's why we have Riemann-Liouville derivative, which is the derivative of the convolution of a continuous function and the power law. Later on, because nature is what is supposed to tell mathematics the direction to take, so capital was working with a real world problem 
and he came out with a different version of a fractional derivative based on the power law. And that is known today as capital derivative, which is actually a convolution of the very first derivative and the power law function. And now, because the nature is very complex, and because many problems will never follow, will not only follow the power law process, there are problems that follow fatigue memory process or decay process, for example, the fatigue. For example, if you, you, you want to evaluate a guy that is running from one place to another, he has an initial velocity or initial strength. He starts running. After running, what will happen is that his body will start becoming, start getting fatigued. And when he runs, he runs, he runs, there will be a time that we, he will fall and he will not be able to move again. So such behavior cannot be explained using the power law. It can only be explained using the exponential function. That is why in 2015, Caputo and Fabrizio, they introduced a fractional derivative based on the exponential function with meta Lefler property, but with a, a delta Dirac property. Of course, that type of derivative can actually model forces that follow, you know, the, the, the fatigue effect or the fatigue memory. However, when you look at the nature, you will realize that there are some problems with a specific crossover. The crossover from decay to power law. Those problems cannot be model using either the capital derivative, capital power law derivative, or capital exponential uh, kernel derivative. So in 2015, uh, 16, myself, Atangana, and Professor Dimitri, we introduced a differential operator or a fractional differential operator based on the generalized metacular flow function. The generalized metacular flow function has many applications in nature that everyone can find. And uh, what is important to me is that we do not stop there. We continue uh, by improving uh, the field of fractional calculus to better understand nature. So I would like to end here because I have less minute for this presentation. So I would like actually to greet the Mexican community of fractional calculus and congratulate again, Professor Francesco and Jose Je Jesus Manuel for their great division project on fractional calculus and order. I would like to tell people from Mexico, the fractional calculus is a well-established theory and has found application in many real world problems. And we need different fractional calculus with different kernel because the world within which we live will not follow a specific mathematical formula. Thank you very much and greeting again from South Africa.